Hi everyone, my name's Michelle. I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also on Etsy and Instagram. Today is the 10th of October. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon here in slightly overcast West Wales. Um, I've got a special guest with me today. This is Albus. Albus, you gonna say hello? Um, so this is my Dalmatian. I put a picture up of him on uh, Instagram the other day. And there was a lot of people saying that they would like to, um, to say him, see him and say hello to him. You got any smiles today, Albus? Have you got any smiles today? <laughs> There's a good boy. There's a good boy. Right. He'll probably just sit and sleep there. Or he might just sit there and just, just watch for a bit. There is any number of noises that might come out of this dog. So <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. And if the postman comes, everything will be gone. We tend to get our post quite late on a, um, well, every day we tend to get our post quite late. So if the post comes, then everything could go flying. So it's been um, another really interesting couple of weeks, actually. I've managed to get quite a bit of stitching done, although not as much as I like, although we say that every week. I was away last weekend, and I'll tell you a bit more about that um, in a wee minute. But I've actually managed to catch up on quite a bit of floss tube. Why are you looking at me strange? Why are you looking at me old? I don't think he's quite sure he knows what's going on. He's looking very, uh, very regal at the moment. Oh, give me a cuddle then, good boy. So, um, as I said, yeah, away last weekend and then this week at school just seems to have taken, taken so much out of me. Um, we, just carrying on with normal school, but obviously the whole mask wearing, hand washing, sanitising, all of that is starting to just wear just a little bit thin. So we've had to, oh, he's gone. So we've had to um, kind of redouble our efforts. Um, so I had some nice nice comments again. Thank you all to, again to everybody who's um, commented on my, on my videos. Um, I did have one lady actually commented. Um, she'd been watching my earlier videos and said, did I, did I ever smile? So I said to her, and, and she was very, very nice about it. Um, so I said to her that I was just a bit nervous. I was trying to remember the details of 40 different projects. But I also do have um, a bit of a resting bitch face. <laughs> And it's got me into trouble a few times before. I think it's partly the kind of Ming the Merciless curve that I've got in my eyebrows. But very often my mum will turn to me and say, who are you scowling at? But I'm not, I'm not scowling at anyone. But uh, talking of um, eyebrows, one funny story we had this, this week. I had to tell a girl off in my, in my class twice for getting out a mirror and fixing her eyebrows, redrawing her eyebrows back on. So I went over to her and I was like, what are you doing? She, I'm, I'm redrawing my eyebrows back on. But she was doing it with a Bic four coloured biro. And so I had to say to her, well, you've only got red, blue, black and green. None of those are the colour of your eyebrows. What are you doing? She's like, I'm just going to go with black, miss. And so she did. Even though I was stood there, she, she finished putting her eyebrow back on with a black biro. Oh, she's a funny girl. She's lovely, but funny girl. <laughs> so, I just wanted to um, go through some floss tubers, because I know I've not mentioned any particularly for the last couple of weeks. So, I went back through my um, floss tube list, and these are the ones that I've that I've watched. So I'm just going to look at my list to make sure that I don't miss anyone out. Joyfeld Stitcher, happy birthday, Annie. It's her 40th birthday week this week, so um, big uh, congratulations and happy birthday to you. Carol the Sockbox Sitcher, I've had a um, few little conversations with Carol over Instagram. She's a big fan of um, Vera and Northumberland, which I've mentioned. Um, and she also commented on my um, pictures from, from Soul in the World from last week. Brenda and the Serial Starter, always a firm favourite. Can't get any better than the pair of them. Barbara's Daughter. Barbara's daughter is about to start her master's degree, so, so good luck to that. I did my master's degree while I was t uh, teaching full-time as well, so I know what it's like to try and study and work at the same time. I can't say it was the most fun experience that I've ever had in studying, but it got the job done. Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Julie, I've been catching up with her as well, who's got beautiful projects. Nisi Lynn, um, 
love watching Nisi Lynn. She's she's been doing some really good house tours uh, this week, so it's been uh, it's been nice to see a few a few different things. She did a clean and decorate with me with a beautiful big porch area, which was really lovely to watch. Jen Stitching Niche, I watched her. She tends to do a video. It seems about every month just to catch up on what she's been doing in the month. She's super busy as well. Um, with her shop and with her with her job but she's always got lovely projects i like her idea this year she's not done anything bigger than 100 by 100 to try and keep her projects moving along which is fab sorry the telly just turned itself on but i think it's just a habit it has i don't think it's going to start playing anything elizabeth ankin stitch did a fantastic parade of quilts that she'd she'd stitched um i have done one quilt top i've yet to actually make it into a quilt um, it's a Christmas one, so we'll have to have a look and see. Maybe closer to Christmas, I'll show you the quilt top, or maybe I'll have actually managed to to quilt it. I do also enjoy watching Valerie stitching in the barn. She's been doing a lot of um, really interesting stash dives so far. Um, last few videos, she's done she's done a lot of those, so that's been really interesting to watch. Very enabling, costs a lot of money. Kindred Stitcher and also Christy from Cross, Cross Hatch Quilts has done a video of all her autumn projects, which again is so inspiring. She's such a lovely, lovely lady and she makes such beautiful things. So what I thought I'd do um, is show you a couple of finishes. I've got four finishes that I have fi previously finished and FFO'd, which are Halloween-y, autumn-y in nature. Uh, so um, I'll start off with the this one. This is, which side's best, there we go, a little, it's a little pillow, but it's filled with walnut crystals, but I only filled it about three quarters full, because when it's sitting on the mantle, what I wanted it to look like was like a little sack, rather than, rather than a pillow, rather than a little cushion. So, uh, it says on it, all natural pumpkin juice, 100% pure, no added potions or poisons. And I've just backed it with some fabric, pumpkin Halloween-y type fabric there. So this is a design by the Subrosa on Etsy. It's stitched on, I'm going to say 28 count, although I didn't write it down. I finished this in time for last, last Halloween. 28 count, and let me just check, Grandma's Sleeve by x Designs, which is one of her ones that's got sort of like the old linen-y type stains on. So this is grandma's, no, grandma's slip, sorry. Grandma's slip, grandpa's sleeve is the other one that she does. So I really enjoyed stitching that one and I love getting that one out year after year. I'm gonna put stuff down here now and hope that he doesn't decide to come and sit back down. Another pillow that I made, and this is the first time I put any um, cording or trim around the outside and it's not necessarily my best effort. So this is uh, Martha Crow, again by the Sabrosa. When you go onto the website, onto her Etsy store, this is just stitched in black. This I added on just for a bit of interest in the red. This is a Valdani red and the other, the black is a Silks For You black. And it's just backed in black velvet, which I really like. I really like backing things in velvet. And then it's got just a black trim. So that's called Martha Crow by the Sabrosa. And I'm gonna say it's a 32 count picture this plus ale. Again, I didn't write them down. This one is stuffed with sawdust. So I went to see our local carpenter and joiner, and this is he gave me a big box of sawdust, which I like. I've not yet tried sawdust and walnut crystals, but I think that would be really, really nice. I've tried walnut crystals with fibre fill, and I like that, but I think sawdust and walnut crystals would be really nice as well. My last two that I'm going to show you today are both by The Witchy Stitcher on Etsy. I love her patterns. Meg, she does some really fantastic things. This first one... is called, I believe it's just called Save Halloween. It actually says stay home, save Halloween. 
and I stitched this on a piece of 28 count linen that I hand dyed. Is it linen or even weave? It's linen. Uh, that I hand dyed in sort of a mixture of purples and blues. I was just having a play around and I ended up with this fabric that I really, really liked, so I popped this on it. Framed in a frame that I found in a charity shop, which wasn't this colour. It was one of those sort of awful, uh, you know, when they put on a really cheap frame, almost like a paper covering that looks like wood. So it, it wasn't very expensive at all. It did have this gold bit in the middle, so I just left that on. This one was on her Etsy store in the very, very beginning, and then it disappeared. So I think I ended up having to buy it from her website. I don't know why it disappeared, but it did. Um, and the bit that I added, her original design just says save Halloween or stay home, save Halloween. And then I added the 2020 there in the green. I can't remember if I used the called for colours or not. They would, it would be in the spirit of the called for colours, even if they're not, if it's not the called for colours. So there's that one. And the last one that I've got, as I said, is another witchy stitcher one. And this is Baba Yaga from the Witchy Stitcher. And it's stitched on 35 count linen that I hand dyed myself. And again, it's in a frame that I found in a charity shop. One of those sort of mega cheap ones, again, left the gold around the outside. And it's one of those ones where they're supposed to look, uh, you know, much more country house than they actually are. And it does have a little plate there, which would have said the name of the, uh, the picture reproduction so I just painted over it you can't really notice it when it's on the wall so that's Baba Yaga and again I'm pretty sure I used the called for the called for colors on that one even the black I think I tried to swap the black for the silks for you black but on the 35 count I found it too too thick and looking at it I've done two over two on 35 count on that one so those are my previous Halloween finishes. I've got some more to show next video but I thought I'd just show a little a little few this video. So next then um, freebies. I like to try and give a freebie in every episode somewhere where you can go and get a freebie something to download and start stitching straight away and I've actually got two for you today. The first one Excuse me. I'm going to have to put a picture up here because uh, I haven't got a picture of the actual design but it's called Willow Wisp Manor of Holler Lane by Pinker and Punkin Quilting. So I'll just put that there and yeah Pinker and Punkin Quilting blogspot.com so I'll put the link to that one um, either across the bottom or below. And you can either have, you can either choose to print off a coloured one or a black and white one. Now I will usually work from a coloured um, chart just because I find it helps me because I know sort of roughly what colour it should be. But the colour chart for this one when it prints out is really, really hard to see the different colours. So I've printed both the colour and the, um, the black and white. But as you can see it's a really, really nice house with... A, a vine of pumpkins and ghosts and cats all the way around the outside so that's a free one that you can just go and print straight from straight from that blog which I really really liked and the second freebie that I've got for you is something that I've spoken a lot on Facebook about to various different people and have um, promoted to various different people a lot and that is the app Readly I like Readly. I've, I've subscribed to Readly probably for nearly, oh, definitely 18 months now. And the reason that I'm giving it out as a freebie is because I'm going to put a code below where you can get a two month trial period. Now, quite often they offer a month's trial period, but I've got a code below which anyone can use. It's not like a single use code. Anyone can, can click on the link below and you can get two months free. And the reason that I like Readly so much is because there are 5,000 magazines. All the magazines that you see on the magazine stands when you go to the newsagents, the supermarkets, wherever, 
I would say that 90% of them are on Readly for you to read as a digital edition. Plus they've got all of the back issues or lots of the back issues. Usually there's at least a couple of years worth of back issues. When you subscribe to Readly, and here in the UK it's £7.99 a month, so when you subscribe to Readly you get five profiles and you can give those profiles to, to whoever you want. So my mother-in-law and father-in-law have got one, my partner's got one, my mum did have one but I, she gave hers to my friend who was in hospital. So we signed him up on one of my profiles and he was able to have whatever magazines he wanted while he was in, in hospital. Now the reason that I really like it is because all the cross stitch magazines are on there or the vast majority of the cross stitch magazines on there so cross stitcher world of cross stitching um just cross stitch so many different ones are on there and you get the back issues now the really good thing about that i like for the just cross stitch is that the halloween issue and the christmas special edition issue both come as part of that um subscription so and they come out long before you start to see them in the shop. So I'd already seen and looked at those issues way before I started seeing a lot of people talking about them who had the, um, the paper copies. You then just screenshot, well, this is what I do, I just screenshot whatever it is I like, print it out, add it to my files so that when I'm going back through, I just flick through and if I find something that I like, I, I stitch it. You could, of course, stitch straight from your device if you've got a device that you that you stitch from. I sometimes stitch from my phone, but not always. I much prefer a paper copy, so I can just take it and do it wherever I like. So you've got the back issues. We just talk about just cross stitch. You've got the back issues of all the Christmas magazines and the Halloween ones, plus the ones that come every month. Now this month, prime example of why I like Halloween and oh, not Halloween, why I like just cross stitch because actually in the month, this month, there was one thing that I liked, just one. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because for that single magazine, I'm not paying very much. If I take into account all the other magazines that I get that month for the same money, that magazine doesn't really cost me very much. And so it doesn't matter if there's only one thing that I like in there. And actually it was the same with the Cross Stitcher magazine this month. There was only one or two things that I liked in there, but I didn't spend, was it 4 99 to get that magazine. I know some people like the freebies on the front of the magazines. I personally don't. I personally don't really ever stitch those. So to me, that's no, that's no great loss. But I've got all the back issues of all the magazines that I really, really liked. And so having one or two bad issues, it doesn't really matter that much. I've not forked out you know, £40 a year to have that magazine. So I'll put the subscription link below and you can get two free months so you can check it out for yourselves. Give your profile, give your other profiles out to friends and family. I think if you, if you buy as a family two magazines, any magazines a month, you will save money with this, with this subscription. So that is my two freebies. Now, before I get onto my whips, I'm just going to because I know some people will wonder what this is. It just happens to be hanging on my little stitchy light here. These, I think I told you that I belonged to one of the Silks For You Flosses of the Month club, where you've got four, 15 or 20 odd, I can't remember if it, which one it was, um, skeins sent to you every month. And that's just my little collection of Silks For You Flosses, which if you've not tried them, are beautiful. So I'm just going to hang those back up there because I knew every time I moved my head you could see them a little bit. Whips. I've worked on four things this month, well since I last filmed, and one of them is a finish so I'm going to leave that one for last. One of the things that I hadn't really planned to work on and those plans I mentioned to you last week, they went out the window, I, um, I even wrote them down on a bit of paper what I was going to do. So this is my game board that I've been working on. And the reason that I've started to work on this is 
as I said, it's been a busy couple of weeks. This is a 25 count and I'm working two over two. So in terms of seeing it and in terms of stitching, it's really, really super easy. Now this is a sal, whoops. This is a sal that I'm doing with um, Michelle McGraw from, made by Michelle McGraw on Flosstube and Instagram. And it's hashtag game board sal. We are doing this one. We both just happen to have it by the drawn thread. It's called Sampler Game Board. So we're both doing this one, but you can do any game board. So any game board that you're stitching, if you want to join us, join along and just go on the hashtag Game Board Sal, then everyone can see what we're stitching on and what progress we're making. I'm doing mine in the Cool Full Colours. I know Michelle is doing hers in slightly more autumnal colours. Uh, halfway through when I was stitching this this week I realised that what I thought was a fairly universal symbol for white isn't a universal symbol for white and the skies on those houses at least one of them should have been blue but some of the skies are white some of the skies are blue some of them are dark blue so I'm not going to worry about it I'm certainly not going to go back and take them out so that's my progress on that one I'll give you a better colour this side actually yeah, slightly. It was looking a little bit dark there. Maybe if I shift along, I can get the project in oh, in slightly better light. There we go. This one is a new one. This is by Blackbird Designs. And it's called Without a Mouse. And it says, no house without a mouse. And that is certainly true in our house. Definitely no house without a mouse in our house. We live really rurally and all that we've got out behind us are fields. And so about this time of year, the little field mice start to come in. And if we catch them, we use, use humane traps, catch them, take them for a little walk down the road and release them. But I'm pretty sure they make it back to the house before I do. Um, but I don't mind. They tend to go in the garage more than, more than anything. So, I love this one. And this is the one that I've been stitching at school. I started it last weekend, but I've been stitching it at school in my lunch breaks as well as stitching it last weekend. This is a piece of 36 count hogs bristle by Fox and Rabbit Designs that I bought from Pete Sagney Deluxe, who also got me the chart actually, they got it from America. I saw on one of the Facebook groups that I'm part of a chat about this chart and one of the people who were chatting said that they were going to ask Peakside Needleworks to get them to get them one so I quickly dropped an email to Sue and said oh, if you get in that chart I'd like a copy of that one as well and she did. Now I had a lovely afternoon yesterday afternoon this is so rare in teaching so I see all these people chatting about these zoom calls that they've had for work and the fact that they just have to listen in and they can do stitching and that never happens so at my school in in science i'm in charge of helping to train the pgc students which means the the students that are learning to teach and we're starting to work with a new university this year so i had to go online and go on a meeting to just see about all the new protocols and things like that but it was one where our cameras were turned off our mics were turned off and it was more of a, a presentation so I had two hours yesterday afternoon of looking at this presentation. A lot of it was very similar to what we were already used to, which was fine, and just stitching, which is why this one you can see, I'd already prepped a lot of my guidelines and things like that. So I just had to do, do fill in and that was lovely. So I finally got the opportunity to be one of those people who gets to do something whilst they're on an online meeting because that just doesn't happen in teaching. It was during my freeze as well, so uh, no teaching time was, was lost. So that's that one. Uh, this one, very pitiful, which is unusual for me on this one. Usually I'm there on this one. This is the seventh block on the Santa's Trips Sal uh, by Barbara Anna through Creative Poppy. And I've just started the seventh block. So it's gonna have the border down there. This is the bottom. So 
the border is going to go all the way along there and this one is some more of the yellow houses with Father Christmas flying over in a sleigh with some reindeer on. So I can't wait to finish this one. I actually took this one with me last weekend when I went to Stow on the World and I went into the framers just to see if they had something that I thought I might like. So the other one that I took with me last weekend on a bit of a kind of preemptive trip but I knew that I was close was Mary Clayton and she's finished. Mary Clayton is finished. So proud to present. Oh let's try and go this way. Mary Clayton. There she is. So she's on 36 count piece of hand dyed linen that I dyed myself. It's got more of a pinky pinky browny tone. It was a very light touch dye. And so you can see all the stitch in there. I used the called for DMC in the called for places. Uh, even the ones that didn't show up particularly well, because I don't mind that actually. I don't mind that you, as I've said before, that you have to go a little bit closer to see some things. The only change that I made, let's see if I can show it more closely, was here there is a brown dog. So of course I had to put a Dalmatian in there, turned him into a, a black and white spotty dog. Actually he's a brown and white spotty dog. The hardest thing I found about this chart actually was here and in the roof and the window above the door there are some non-standard crosses so instead of going two over two no start again instead of going over two threads they go over two in one direction and over one in the other direction so it's a bit like a normal cross stitch but half the width and so I'd left those to the end because it's obvious, you know, obviously what little old Mary has, has done. She's written a name and then got to the end and gone, I can't fit in. And so she's kind of done this lovely thing. Whoops. She's done this lovely thing where she's changed, let's go back this way, where she's changed the sort of size of her crosses. Okay. Nowadays, I think, well, I'd call that a bodge job, but I think it's brilliant. And as I said, we're also so happy to stitch in the mistakes that these girls have made and we try so hard to take our own out. But there's, let's see if I can get a screenshot of that. There's Mary Clayton, so happy to have her framed. So I picked out a frame. I put that up on my Instagram last week. It's not the kind of frame that I would normally go for, but I'm, I've got my eye on like a sampler wall. And so I want a bit of variation in the frames that I'm going to choose so a kind of a it's got a darker brown edge and then it's very textured gold and what I might do is when I take her back I'll speak to Jill at Cotswold Framing and oh, Cotswold Art Supplies it's Cotswold Framing as well and maybe get her to run a slightly darker beading around the the frame and the inside so that it picks up a little bit more of this this darker colour. I had so much lovely feedback about the pictures that I put up from, from Stow on the Wold last weekend. Uh, it's such a lovely street, it's actually called Church Street in, in Stow on the Wold and I if you look on the photos and I'll pop, pop a photo back up, the middle of the street is actually got a dip in it and you can see because there's loads of water sitting in it from where it was so horrendously raining last week. Um, so the reason it's got a dip in that street is because from the church, which is at the end of the road, and this is rubbish directions, here's the shop, running out down that street and also running out in several other places from the church is a series of catacombs. And the catacombs that run out from, from the church were apparently used in the Civil War because one of the last battles of the English Civil War, that's the postman, I'll see if, you, if he's heard it. Um, one of the last battles of the Civil War fought in, in Stowe Square. And one of the other streets is called Digbeth Street. And actually in Old English it translates to Duckblood Street. 
because they said that the blood of the soldiers was running so deep that the dogs, the ducks could swim in it. I'll be back. I'm back. Right. That was amazing. That was such brilliant timing because the things that came in the post, I can show you. So, two things. This is a chess set. Well, actually, it's a specific type of chess set that I'd never heard of before called Penta Chess. And without going through and looking at it, I looked online, I couldn't find anything, anything more about that. But it's a way of playing chess, either singles, doubles, up to four players. And it looks like if you're playing with four people, you can start at the corners. But the reason that I bid on this chess set is because I was looking for a chess set to go with my game board. Yeah. Just sent loads of stuff flying, never mind. To go with my game board. And my game board has got blues, greens, reds, yellows in it. And I didn't have a chess set. I've got a glass chess set, but I, I didn't think that would go. So I've been looking on eBay for a chess set that had the colours that I thought would look nice with the board. And I saw this one, and it's basically four different chess sets. And I'll just grab out a couple of the pieces. There's a set that's blue. Where are we? There we are. There's a set that this, is this lovely blue. There's a set which is red. And there's a set which is this lovely 60s or 70s bathroom colour. And a yellow. So I thought that they would look marvellous once my game board is framed as my chess pieces and they are going to be perfect sizes for the board. I'm well happy with those. Marvellous. So I've got four different colours so you can play blue and green, blue and yellow, red and blue. And then the other thing that came, I was thinking about this this morning actually, was, I don't know if you remember, a couple of um, episodes ago, I told you that I'd ordered something from Owl Forest Embroidery. And they told me that it would be here middle of September. And I really wasn't convinced. It's just turned up. I've just quickly gone over my address because I knew that I would probably flash it in some way. So, all I've done is just slip the top. So I'm gonna unbox it now. I'm gonna show you exactly what I've got. So nicely packaged in some bubble wrap. This is going to be crinkle crinkle. I might have to break the rule which I know a lot of husbands have died for which is using the stitching scissors. But they're my stitching scissors so it's okay. I'm sure you all know that husbands and partners have to be kept away from stitching scissors otherwise you find them cutting the nails with them or doing all sorts of things but those are mine so so what we've we got here piece of information don't need that bubble wrap don't need that and here it is I went for this one which I can't remember what it was called in English and it hasn't got it written on but you can see it's the guy with the big beard riding the sturgeon. Now I live with a guy with a big beard. He's pretty fond of fishing as well. It doesn't go as often as he, he used to, but so I like that. So let's see what's inside. This could turn into a little bit of a haul heavy video as well, actually. I've got a bit more to show you. I'd love to say it's stuff that I've ordered ages ago and just come in today, but had these last two weeks. Oh. Okay. So. 
that's beautiful little brochure I love that out oh, look on the back there I might have to make a couple of floss drops not floss drops um, those nice glass things that hang from floss rings thread drops there we go no they're not thread drops thread minders you know what I mean so I might have to make a couple of those um, what else have we got in here chart obviously okay that's interesting oh no so we've got one big I'm just gonna hold it up like that to the light so that you can sort of see through it we've got one big chart but for some reason there is a second one which I don't know if you can see through can you see it's sort of in pieces which you can cut out and stick together I don't understand I don't understand why I've got that but I've, I'll probably just use this one can I get it up to the light so you can see through it this one big chart the one that you cut up and stick looks like it will be bigger when you cut and stick it. okay then it comes with the fabric all beautifully serge the I got fabric all nicely edged It comes with a needle and oops, take that off there and a needle minder, which is a little sturgeon. Well, not little; they're not little. A sturgeon, and then a needle. Looks very nice. Looks about. Could be a 26 or a 28. I'm not very good with needle sizes. But it looks like the ones I just bought, which were 28. And then these are the flosses. They come on little. They come attached to a little mm. bobbin like that, so you can put them onto a little bobbin. Now let me see if I can find a way of showing you the colours of these. So you can see they're they're variegated. So there's a blue and a pale purple, very pale purple. I don't know whether I can do this effectively or not. Some browns, oranges, yellows, and a skin tone. I'm not sure which way which side of me is better. And then. I'm looking forward to this. Looking forward to stitching this. And then beautiful greens there. So all together, because of the way they're tied, they don't hang very well. But all together, that is the floss palette. Nice. Nah. Nice, nice, nice. Ah, that has just about made my day. That's the best haul from the postman in ages, on a single day. Right, now, where was I? Good job I've made some notes this time. Haul, more haul. In my basket. So I've been keeping my haul nice and separate in my basket, which is two-sided. You can hear one of the things that's in there. In fact, two of the things that are in there. So let's start off with those. One, two. Now I've got my drink down here, so I'm trying not to spill it on there. I bought me some of these from eBay. I just Googled pumpkin bells. And that's what came up. There's a couple of different sizes. I think I went for the slightly bigger ones. So I bought a pack of 10 of those for about three pounds. Oh, sticking attached to me. And then I also bought some rusty bells. 
ding 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 for finishing for full whoops full finishing and I think there's 10 10 in that little packet there so I've got those and then the rest of the stuff if you haven't got a brew go and get a brew and I'm going to have to try and remember there we go that's the thing try and remember where I got everything from so the first thing is my what month are we in now October this must be September September's pack of six fancy flosses that have come from Carla at the Patchwork Rabbit no peeking this time no threat of death on opening this time so she's she's getting kinder so that will be part of my um, advent calendar if you haven't heard what I'd said about it I wanted to do an advent calendar of fancy flosses we've got a beautiful house with lots of little drawers in it so I decided that I was going to put a fancy floss in each one so she's very kindly kindly picking out six every month for me so August September what comes after that October and November I think of the months there so she's picking out six for me every month sending them so that I can't see them and then I'm going to get Chris to put them into the um, the little house so that I can have an advent calendar as well we like advent calendars in this house the other thing that came from her in fact two other things was my monthly fabric club which is a picture this plus now I get a fat eight I get a fat eight every month and I've actually just switched from 40 count to 36 count because so I'm finding picture this plus 40 count just a bit tight um, just for seeing without a magnifier and I quite like to stitch without a magnifier I can stitch normal 40 count fine without a magnifier but picture this plus is can be very tight especially the dark ones so this is picture this plus vellum and I've got a fat eighth of that from there I don't know if there's any spots left in the club or not but if you go on to Patchwork Rabbit or drop Carla an email she'll be able to tell you and the other thing that I got from there were two more of the 10 yard skeins of blue spruce spruce brew blue spruce I never get the wrong way around for Maria Dale because I would actually really like to get Maria Dale finished before half term because I think I'm going to go back to the Cotswolds and put my Mary Clayton in for framing um, so I'd like to take Maria Dale as well and get her done at the same time and Santa's trips so we'll see so that is Blue Spruce so I had two 10 yard skeins from them as well so that is from patchwork rabbit I had some other haul from ah now this is one that you might not have heard of but is an amazing lady in fact I've got two things that came from her and I don't mind getting multiple packages from this lady because she doesn't charge postage so up in near Oswestry there is a shop called the Nimble Needle now she does not have a, a website as such she's got a website but you can't purchase from it as far as I know but she does do a lot on eBay all brand new things all the things that she stocks in the shop now she has got lots and lots of really interesting things from America her name's Chris her eBay is called Tanat 2 which I'll put under um, I'll put along the bottom here so go and have a look in her shop don't buy anything that I want to buy don't don't be doing that um, but, but you can look I'll let you look but she never charges postage it's all free postage so my first little package of stuff that I got from her was the Lindy Stitches Dracula's Confession which I really really like I'm gonna have a go at dyeing a fabric to go with it and actually I think I am gonna film a couple of tutorials a few people have asked me about filming some tutorials I'm not gonna call them tutorials as such because I'm 
I only know what I'm doing because of what other people do it. So I'm going to just show you what I do. So I'm hoping to do one which is walnut dyeing, one which is ice dyeing uh, with Procyon dyes probably, um, and Rick dyeing. So one of the ones that I want to have a go at is something for that. But if anybody can tell me where in this country you can buy pearl grey writ dye, then let me know because I can't find it anywhere. I don't know what's happened to writ. Lots and lots of places are really out of stock of writ. So I might have a go with the Procyon dyes for that one, but we'll see. I'll, I'll post the videos when I've done them. So there's that one. And then she was doing like a little goodie pack of three charts, three Halloween charts, um, very reasonable for all three of them together. So little Lizzie Kate, uh, why yes, I can drive a stick. So a nice little quick, quick one there. And two Homespun Elegance ones. I really like Homespun Elegance. This one's called uh, Ding Dong. And it looks like this might have been part of a yearly club or something, because this one's got July written on the top of it. And this one has got September. This is Witch In by Homespun Elegance as well. Hopefully there's not getting too much glare on that. And this one actually comes with a couple of little, I don't know if you can see those little gold stars. So I bought those from her. And the other thing that I bought from her, which I'd seen on American floss tubers and, and American sites, and I didn't think I'd be able to get for ages, is this one. This is the chart by the Blackberry Rabbit. called Happy Halloween. Actually, no, it's not. It's called October 31st, 1693. But what I really wanted, I hope the light's still okay. It's gone very dark outside. What I really wanted was the fabric. Let's see if I can put this. So it is a fabric flare fabric called Newspaper Halloween. I don't know if you can see. It's got a printed newspaper from October 1693. Now up close, you can't actually read. You can read a little bit of it, but you can't really read it. But it's about, I wouldn't say it's a full fat quarter. I would imagine it's one of those sort of 50 by 55 ones. And that is what it looks like. Now I am not, I don't think, going to put this chart on it <coughs> excuse me a sickle in my throat and an itchy nose something else will happen in a minute I don't think I'm going to put this chart on it just because I don't like the amount of space that's left around I think I'm going to look for something else. I was looking last night at the little stitcher on Etsy and I was looking also at um, the primitive hair. I'm going to try and find something I think that is a little bit bigger and takes up just a bit more of that space. So it's still, you can still see it's a newspaper fabric but it just takes up a little bit more of that space. I love that design, don't get me wrong, but I would probably put that on something on something slightly different and I got that from her and it came with some black DMC and also um, enough red DMC the spider where are I the spider there just in the body I don't know if you can see it's got a little bit of red in that so I was super pleased I literally could not press the button quick enough to buy that from her and as I said it didn't matter that I'd already got something from her the previous couple of days because it's, it's free postage She's also very good at getting things in for you, which I will show you in a minute. A couple more things. I uh, picked up this on eBay. This is a piece of Silk Weaver 28 count Jobelin. It's not the size it says it is. It's, it's, it was a fat half that's been cut down into a fat quarter. And it's a lovely blue, blue-brown. Whoop. There's more blue at the bottom there. 
going into blue brown so I'm really looking forward to stitching something on that I really like silk weaver fabric fabrics but they don't you don't get them so easily over here so I'm very pleased with that and then two more charts no I lie I tell lies four more charts eBay again reasonable price picked up these two from Birds of a Feather Lost Spirits which I really really like I love the dark fabrics I love these on the dark fabrics and Scared Silly and again Birds of a Feather is one that you don't see massively often on our UK sites people have the odd one or two but not not always a great selection so I was pleased to grab those what else what else oh this one Sweet Summer Come Again by Blackbird Designs there's nothing about this that I don't like absolutely nothing and this little roll here I really fancy having a go at making that uh, so it's going to be similar to making a drum but I've got to work out how you do it obviously without having the cardboard the cardboard in it I'm sure I'm sure there'll be a tutorial out there for me to look at and then the big pincushion drum and just I just love their little details can you see on here it's just got a little uh, not a paper clip that's not a paper clip nappy pin it's not a nappy pin you know what I mean safety pin there we go words with some little buttons on it perfect lovely idea and then the last one I got I got this because I lost out on eBay to one that was kitted why I didn't just put just a little bit more on it I don't know because it was pro properly kitted and that would have been much easier but I saw this on April May June her floss tube uh, she's also a UK floss tuber if you're not watching her go and go and have a good look at her but she's just had this this one framed and it's called stars and I've seen it lots of times before and I've loved it but hers is superb it's on a really nice dark fabric I want to say that she said it was something like granite mm, so I got granite which I've actually got some of but I might have been wrong but hers just looked superb the blues almost like glowed off the fabric so that was a must as soon as I lost out on eBay to it I was like oh, right <laughs> so I, I bought the chart I probably won't be starting it any time really soon but you never know you never know I'm going to show you two more things now that are plans not necessarily going to start this month because I think I've already over committed on plans that I told you about last last week but you never know so the first one I'm going to show you is not something that I had seen before but it popped up on Stash Unload uh, one of the Stash Unload UK sites and I wasn't quick enough I wasn't quick enough but I absolutely loved it so I looked online for the chart and this is a set of charts by Prairie Grove Peddler Prairie not easy to say Prairie Grove Peddler to make three pumpkins and they've got like sampler detail on them so they've got an alphabet and other sampler motifs and then you make the three pumpkins so I missed out on it I'd never seen it before so I found it online and obviously it was in America but there was something on the website I think that said if you can't get the charts in where you are drop us an email and we will sell you a PDF so I did dropped her an email literally within probably 24 hours she came back to me and said yeah this is the price here's your PayPal in invoice so I paid her and she sent me the PDF but I really liked those and I just happened to have the dies out one weekend so I've dyed myself some fabric now the plan oh, I should have given these an iron 
they looked reasonably all right in the bag. The plan is that I didn't want them all to be the same. So when I was mixing the orange dye, and these are rip dyed in the jar, I added just a little bit of brown, a bit more orange, bit, so just changed it just fractionally every time. So that's the first one. So nice dark orange with some good mottling on it. This one, oh, I've got lots of orange dye. This one, it's got a bit more brown to it. So if I put them up together, you can see that they are, is it gonna actually let me see this? That they are fractionally different colors. And then this one, I think is the one that I just did orange straight out of the bottle. So I've got three strips to make three pumpkins, all slightly different tones of orange. And then I've just found in there as well, I've got this one. <laughs> I must have had an orange dyeing weekend, so not sure what I'm going to do with that. That looks like it could be a 28 count. I think these are probably 32. I don't know, without looking at it, without measuring it properly. But that's quite a nice orange. Hmm. That? On that? Maybe. Could be. Could happen. So yeah, that's one of the things that I would really, really like to start if I suddenly had another three weeks off work. And this is my last thing that I would really like to start. Now, this is an idea that I have, I'm not even going to say borrowed, I have shamelessly stolen from Julie, from who's Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, who got the idea from a Mill Hill Village Christmas stitch where it was all on one piece. So she started a an Halloween Mill Hill Village stitch. So as soon as I saw that, I started to try and source the Mill Hill kits. They are really hard to find in the UK. The Halloween ones are really hard to find. The Christmas ones are a bit easier to find, but the, ha the Halloween ones are really hard. So I spoke to Chris, who I've sort of got to know through buying things from her on eBay at the Nimble Needle and said to her, can, can you get these for me? Can you, and gave her a list of the ones that I wanted. And she said, yep, yeah, no problem. I'll add them to my, to my next order. They came, I want to say about six weeks, but this was during lockdown. It might have even been two months, but as I said, it was, it was during lockdown. So I wasn't expecting to see them potentially even, even till now, but I've had them for quite a while. And so the first thing I did was dyed myself a piece of fabric. Um, I've thrown the whiteboard, oh, no, there's the whiteboard. This is an even weave. And it was a bit of a mystery even weave that I had. I'm not massively sure what the fabric is. I know it's a 28 count even weave, but I think it's I think it's got quite a lot of synthetic in it. It's not just a plain cotton because normally it's very hard to get dye to take that that well and be that dark. But I did leave it in for a good like goodly long time. If I put it back here, does that give you a better? So that's my fabric. I am going to have it this way. <laughs> I am going to have it this way and I chose six. There were six of the Halloween villages that I really wanted to do. So I'm going to do three along the top and three along the bottom. And these are the ones that I chose. Are they all in here? Yes, they are. So I chose, let's see if I can cut down on the glare. They're not flat packets, which doesn't help. I chose Opera House. I don't know which order I'm gonna do these in yet. I chose Haunted Library. I chose Wonders Wands, which I think is the one that Julie, a Kansas City girl in a Colorado world has already stitched on hers. It's either that or the Haunted Library. I think it's the Haunted Library actually. 
then the haunted laboratory which is obviously my favorite place to be uh, the haunted hotel and the haunted mansion there we go so they all come with in case you've never seen these before they all come with perforated paper which I'm not going to use not for this project anyway the different flosses lots of beads and they all have a clay button I'm going to make a decision at the time as to whether I put the clay buttons on to my mind some of the clay buttons are better than others so I might not put all of them on but I might put some of them on right I think that is it now I hope you've managed to get to the end of the video without pausing and buying things actually no I don't I hope you have I hope you've treated yourselves to something that you've seen on the video this week um, I am going to be doing another video before the end of October so in two weeks time and I'm hoping as I said to do some uh, videos on dyeing and using the various different techniques that I've tried I'm also going to do one on marbling as well because uh, people had asked me whether I would do one on marbling which I will do but that's it from me uh, have a very safe very happy two weeks and I will see you again very very soon take care bye bye